Hello and welcome to Daily Reflection with Anil Varna. It is the 8th of April 2019. We're going to reflect on John chapter 8, verses 12 to 20. Again Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Then the Pharisees said to him, You are testifying on your own behalf. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, Even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid because I know where I have come from and where I am going, but you do not know where I come from or where I am going. You judge by human standards, I judge no one. Yet even if I do judge, my judgment is valid, for it is not I alone who judge, but I am the Father who sent me. In your law it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is valid. I testify on my own behalf, and the Father who sends me testifies on my behalf. Then they said to him, Where is your Father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my Father. If you knew me, you would know my Father also. He spoke these words while he was teaching in the treasury of the temple, but no one arrested him because his hour had not yet come. The Gospel of the Lord. Pick up any newspaper and what do you see? Stories about racism, violence, sexual abuse, torture, terrorism, dirty politics and much else that show that the world we live in is in darkness. Christians need to be the light that shines in the darkness. Jesus says you are the light of the world. Let your light shine among men so that they can see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. But like the moon that reflects the light of the sun because it has little light of its own, we need to reflect the light of Jesus. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And the key word here is follow. Calling ourselves Christians has little meaning if we don't follow Jesus. Some of the worst atrocities in human history have been committed by those who have called themselves Christians. And while people from other faiths may have also done terrible things, let us not concern ourselves with them. I don't know how many of them were told to be the light of the world. We are. So let me tell you a parable. There was once a young boy who was very naughty and his father despaired of ever changing him until one day he had an idea. He took the boy to the garden and showed him the fence surrounding the house. And he told the boy, every time you do something bad, I'm going to take a nail and hammer it into the fence. And every time you are good, I will take a nail out. Now the boy was so bad it wasn't too long before the fence was covered with nails. One day as the boy was returning home from school he saw this nail covered fence and something in his heart moved. He decided to stop being bad and start being good and every time he did good his father would remove a nail from the fence. Pretty soon all the nails were gone. Happily the boy went to his father and told him to look at the fence and his father said, son, I am very proud of you but I want to show you something and he pointed to the holes the scars left behind by the nails that had been hammered in that. The world today is like that and it isn't only the bad guys who have been hammering nails into it. We have too and although they might not be big nails even little nails hurt. Try taking a little pin and poking it into your hand and this has to stop and we can make it stop first by not hammering nails into that world, then taking out the nails that are in it by doing good, and then finally by healing the scars left behind with the only thing that can heal it, and that is love. But as we've discovered, it takes the Holy Spirit to do that, but Him we have. So, let us be the light of the world. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you in repentance, asking for your forgiveness for all the times we've hurt you and hurt each other, causing pain 
to a world that is already in agony. We would like to change this world, Lord. We would like to make it a better place. And the way to start is by stopping the sin that we continue to do very often shamelessly and mindlessly and start to lead a life that is virtuous and noble. And we believe, Lord, that when we do this, when we lead a life like this, the world will become a better place. And then, Lord, if we just apply the love that we receive from you in such great abundance to the people around us, we will actually live in a world that is sweet and nice and gentle and kind. And it would be so nice to live in a world like that. So, Lord, today we pray to you, make that happen through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.